Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be going over exactly how to get simple, easy Osseous kills for complete beginners. The minimum requirements for this video are 70 Necromancy, 70 Prayer, 70 Defense, and 70 Summoning. Completion of the Haunted Mind quest for the Salve Amulet E is also recommended, but outside of that, everything else is optional. This method uses Revolution with a few manual inputs. We're going to be going through the gear and inventory setup, and then after that, we'll get into the boss fight and I'll show you the best way to deal with every single mechanic. So with that said, let's get into it. For the gear, I'm wearing a full set of Tier 70 Death Dealer, which is the hood, the top, the gloves, the robe bottom, and the boots. As for weapons, I'm also using an augmented tier 70 death guard and an augmented skull lantern. In my pocket slot, I'm using a scripture of one because the pages are relatively inexpensive and so is the book. But alternatively, if you wanted to use a jazz scripture or a full scripture, both of those would work as well. In my quiver slot, I've got the Death Warden Nexus, which is basically a necromancy rune pouch. Inside of this nexus, I have all of my ectoplasm as well as the necromancy runes that I'm going to be using throughout the fight. In my ring slot, I'm wearing the Occultist Ring, which is a drop from Osseus, but if you don't have one, feel free to go with a Ring of Death, Asylum Surgeon's Ring, Reaver Ring, or Zorgoth's Soul Ring. All of those are going to be good options. In my amulet slot, I've got a Salve Amulet E equipped for plus 20% damage and accuracy when fighting against undead enemies. The Salve Amulet E is extremely good at Osseus, and the only alternative you could use if you have it is the Necklace of Salamancy. But in this video, we're going to be using a Salve Amulet because it's just about equal in usefulness and it's a lot easier to get. For our cape slot, we're going to be using an Obsidian Cape, but there are lots of other options here. You could do something like a Legends Cape, a Kiln Cape, or if you have one, you can bring a Zuck Cape as well. With our worn equipment out of the way, we're going to look at auras. In this video, I decided to use the Aegis Aura for 10% damage reduction, but some other really good options would be Majorat, Vampirism, or Penance. Now let's take a look at the invent. For healing, I have an invent full of green blubber jellyfish. These regularly heal 500 life points, but if you also bring the expensive spices necklace from the Let Them Eat Pie quest, every single bite of blubber jellyfish you take is actually going to heal an additional 50. So you're instead of getting 500 per bite, you're actually going to get 550 every single time. Jellyfish is the preferred food to bring here because you can consume jellyfish without your adrenaline bar decreasing. This makes it one of the best foods in the game. Outside of that, I've also got a stack of vulnerability bombs. These can be applied to your target every one minute and will give you an additional 10% damage. Vulnerability bombs are quite expensive, but at a boss like Osseus where you're going to be making millions of coins every hour, it can be a really good way to speed up your kills. After that, I've got some prayer restoring potions. In this instance, I'm electing to use super restores. And then last but not least, I have a stat boosting potion. In this video, I'm using a super necromancy, but of course, if you have an extreme necromancy or overloads, those will of course be better. Because I'm level 120 necromancy on my main account, I've actually artificially lowered my necromancy level to the mid 80s for this video. So what you see when I'm going over the boss fight is exactly what you're gonna experience when you have those stats. Now let's go over some optional things. If you have archaeology relics unlocked, I'm going with Berserker's Fury and Fury of the Small in this video. But if you don't have relics, you do not need them for this video. We're going to be using the regular prayer book and we're going to be boosting up our damage output with the Sanctity Prayer, which requires level 70 prayer and defense respectively. Of course, if you have ancient curses and a high prayer level, those are going to be better. But in this video, we're going to be going with the standard ones. As for familiars, in this video, we're going to be using a Hellhound because it requires only level 45 summoning, so long as you have access to ancient familiars. In order to make sure our Hellhound doesn't die, we're also going to be putting some scrolls into it. These scrolls can be used to heal it up whenever its life points get low, so that it doesn't die. But this isn't something you'll have to do mid-kill, so it's really only for in-between kills for whenever you notice its life points are getting low. And last but not least, let's talk about invention perks. Augmenting gear in general is extremely important you'll get a ton of extra damage reduction and the ability to deal significantly more damage. If you're able to get some basic augments, I've linked a wiki guide in the description down below, but once again, invention perks are not needed for this method. The one other thing we need to go over before we get into the boss fight is our revolution bar. To start things off, I've got Conjure Vengeful Ghost in my first slot. You want the ghost to be alive at all times as it will provide you a damage buff and it will also heal you passively throughout the fight. In my second slot, I've got Conjure Skeleton Warrior, because you constantly want to have a skeleton fighting by your side. After that, I've got my two basic stack builders, which are Touch of Death, as well as Soul Sap. These are both going to run throughout the entire fight, making sure that you have the stacks required to use powerful abilities. Whenever Touch of Death gives you six or more Necrosis stacks, you can use Finger of Death for a large hit. And the same goes with Soul Sap. As soon as you have three souls, you can use Volley of Souls at any point throughout this fight. 
I've also added my Death Guard special attack, which is called Death Grasp, to my action bar. This can be manually fired at any point, but it's better used when you have a lower amount of necrosis stacks, like zero, two, or four. Outside of that, there are four other important abilities on my screen that I'm gonna be firing manually to deal with mechanics. The first is Escape, which is gonna move my character back by seven tiles. The second is Resonance, which is gonna turn the next hit that would have damaged me instead into a heal. And then after that, I've got Conjure Putrid Zombie, as well as Blood Siphon, which we're gonna be using to deal with one of the mechanics. With our action bar setup out of the way, why don't we get into the fight? You can unlock access to the Oseus boss fight by completing the Oseus Rex quest. This is a very simple quest that requires 70 necromancy as well as 30 archaeology, and you can start it by talking to the calm archaeologist in the Anachronia base camp. Heading into the boss fight, we're going to start things off by making sure that our aura is activated as well as whatever book we have in our pocket slot. For me, that's my scripture of one. In addition to that, you're going to want to use your stat boosting potion, whether it's a super necromancy, an extreme necromancy, or an overload of any kind. After that, make sure your overhead prayers are either protect or deflect necromancy, depending on if you're on ancient curses or not, and then you're going to want to activate a stat boosting necromancy prayer. Once that's out of the way, we are going to run into the boss fight and we're going to click on Oseus. Our revolution bar is going to do a lot of the work here, but we are also going to throw a vulnerability bomb. As I mentioned earlier, vulnerability lasts for one minute, so you don't need to chuck these things all the time, but whenever the icon on screen that is currently displayed is not present, you're going to want to throw another one. After a couple necromancy attacks that are going to deal about 500 damage, Osis is going to do a ranged attack. The ranged attack looks a little bit different, as a series of bones are going to land on your character. And because we are not going to be prayer flicking to protect or deflect range, this is going to deal a little bit more damage, about 15 or 1600. But there's one other really important thing about this range attack, which is that after the range attack, there's going to be one more necromancy attack, and then we're going to want to activate our first manual ability, which is Resonance. This is because exactly two attacks after the range attack, Oseus is going to perform a tail swipe, which is a 6,000 damage melee attack. So to deal with that, what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be using the Resonance ability. Because we've got Bone Shield and we're using Necromancy, we don't need to equip a shield to use Resonance. But what Resonance will do is it's going to take that 6,000 damage hit, and instead of taking it out of your life points, it's instead going to heal you for about the same amount. And because of this, no matter how low our life points are, this is pretty much going to get us all the way to full HP. So that's the first real mechanic of the boss fight. Whenever you see that range attack, count one more Necromancy attack, and then it's time to use Resonance. After this first tail swipe, you're going to see a series of baby dinosaurs spawning around the arena and walking towards Oseus. Whenever you see the dinosaurs converging on your location, you want to click what is my H key, which is summon up the zombie. As long as we've summoned up our zombie, all we need to do is continue focusing on dealing damage and using our stacks when we have them. As an example here, I noticed that I've got three necrosis stacks, so it's a great time to use Finger of Death. So I'm going to use Finger of Death, spend my necrosis stacks, and now it's time for the stun. At this point, Oseus is going to do a weaker tail swipe that will not hit 6,000 damage, it'll instead hit about 2,000, and then he's actually going to spend all of the little baby dinosaurs flying around the room. And at this point, those dinosaurs are going to be able to converge on you and attack you. It's really important to do this next step carefully, because if you do it incorrectly, every dinosaur that is left alive and at full life points is going to hit you for 2,500 damage. So it's basically a one-shot mechanic, especially if you're a little bit lower on life points. But fortunately, this is a really easy mechanic to deal with, because all you need to do is as soon as you get tail swiped, just spam click on Command Zombie. And what Command Zombie will do is in about three seconds, that zombie is going to detonate and is going to clear every single one of the baby dinosaurs every single time. So just to watch that back again, the dinosaurs are converging on my location, and as soon as I see them, I'm going to press my H key, which is going to conjure up the zombie. At this point, I'm just going to keep focusing on dealing damage to the boss, and there's really nothing to worry about. But then, as soon as you've got that larger tail swipe, all you need to do is make sure that you're pressing off and firing off Command Zombie. You may have to click this multiple times because this tail swipe also does come with a three second stun, but the timing on this is absolutely perfect. So the second the stun wears off and your command zombie works, all the dinosaurs will be converged on your location. And just like that, explosion, and they are all gonna get cleared. It's worth noting at this point that my life points are pretty low, and this is a boss that can be killed with no food, even with this setup, and the kill you're watching is a no food kill, but a lot of it is going to depend on how comfortable you are with the boss. Because I'm familiar with the mechanics of the boss, I don't feel the need to eat food, but if you're a little less comfortable on a lower life point, you should be eating these green blubber jellyfish, especially because they're lossless to consume, you want to keep your life points somewhere where you're comfortable. 
One thing I would advise though for learning is you never want your HP to be consistently topped all the way back up, because when we're using abilities like Resonance to give us HP back if you're already full HP, well, it's not really doing a huge benefit. Now that those minions have cleared, things get a little bit easier for the next little bit. All I'm going to be doing here is quite simply using my stacks. I had three souls there, so we're going to be using Volley of Souls, and I'm letting my Revo Bar build up all of my stacks for me. Once Oseus roars, you're going to be paralyzed by Oseus's fear. And what this is going to do is no matter where you are in the room, you're going to get pulled to the exact location I'm standing. And then on screen, it says that I need to deal 5,000 damage to break free of the fear. While you're in this pose, you're going to be taking a small amount of damage over time and you'll be unable to move. But it's really not a big deal because your Revolution Bar and your Conjurers by themselves will be able to deal this amount of damage in no time. But what is important is once you've freed yourself and you've dealt that 5,000 damage, it will say you have broken free of Oseus's fear run. And at this point, what you want to do is turn your attention to the ability bar where we're going to press what is keybound to F for me, which is escape. What escape is going to do is it's going to shoot me seven tiles back because Oseus is about to take a very large bite out of your current location. So as you can see, I'm going to press escape. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to wait for Oseus to do a bite animation, and then at that point, I'm safe to move back in and resume attacking. Playing this again, it's extremely simple. We break the tendril. As soon as it says run, all we're going to do is hit escape, wait for the animation to play, and then run back in. If you get hit by this, it's going to hit between five and 6,000 damage. So alternatively, if you really wanted to, you could just eat a bunch of food, but it's a really easy mechanic to avoid. Something else that's worth noting is that the escape ability as well as the surge ability are movement abilities that are off the global cooldown, which means you don't need to time them at all. The second you press the escape ability, it is going to activate instantaneously. It doesn't matter if your revolution bar is in the middle of firing something else, it is always going to work. Now that we're back and attacking Oseus, we're going to see that he's actually going to begin resuming the same attack pattern as before. So all we're going to do here is focus on dealing damage and spending our stacks as we have them. You're going to notice right there that we've got another range attack. And because of that, we know in two attacks, we're going to have another melee tailspin where we're going to want to use the resonance ability. So that's one attack. And just like that, I'm going to use resonance. And you're going to see right here the true power of the resonance ability. I just healed 4,446 damage for nothing. I didn't have to eat a single food. And just like that, I've got a good chunk of life points for the next mechanic, which repeats from the beginning. We've got another set of undead dinosaurs, but this time I'm going to do something ever so slightly different. One of the abilities on my bar that we haven't used yet is keep out to shift A, and it's called Blood Siphon. What Blood Siphon does is it siphons life points from the enemies around you. And for the first set of skeletons, I didn't bother using it because I was already full life points. But this time around, if you want to convert this convergence of skeleton dinosaurs into some life points, all you need to do is once you press your H key to conjure up your zombie, because we're going to need that later, all you're going to do is you're going to press the Blood Siphon ability. And you'll see here on my channeling bar that it's channeling and I'm gaining an absolute ton of life points. It's going to get me all the way to full life points. Then it's exactly the same as before. I get stunned by the tail swipe. I'm spam clicking on my command zombie. And just like that, my zombie is going to explode and clear off the rest of them. Something else that's really cool about the setup we're currently using is that it's going to likely automatically apply a death mark. Death mark is a really strong ability that's extremely useful because for a lot of monsters, as soon as they're below 30,000 life points, they're going to die instantly. And Oseus is no exception. So just like that, as soon as we get the boss under 30,000 life points, the boss fight is complete and we're going to get a loot pile spawning directly underneath our character. As you can see, looking at my invent, we didn't actually need any food. We didn't use any of our prayer potions, but we did use three vulnerability bombs. So this is pretty much a perfect storm for how this fight is going to look in a perfect world. That being said, when you're first learning, it makes a ton of sense that you're not going to get these mechanics perfect on the very first go. So this is something to aim to be able to do as you're working through the boss and as you're getting more and more kills. So no need to feel bad if you're using a lot more food than I am in this instance. So with that said, I really hope this video was helpful. I am super excited about this boss existing in the game because it is such a great teacher of so many different mechanics. And with that said, I hope you all enjoyed and I will see you very soon for the next one.